I've built a lot of space shuttles in KSP over the years. Big ones, small ones, weird ones, broken ones, but they've generally always done one thing, deliver payload or crew to low Kerbin orbit. I've always used the shuttle as a means to an end, rather than have it go somewhere exciting, if that makes sense. Until today! You see, I was scratching my head about what video to do this week, and this idea suddenly popped into my head. Why not make a realistic NASA-style space shuttle and land it on the moon, with crew and everything? Now the margins are going to be very tight. To keep the shuttle proportional, it's not going to have very much delta V. One of the ways I sort of handicapped myself here is probably evident in the build time lapse. Instead of going the easy way and building the fuselage out of Mark III size fuel tanks, I'm instead constructing a fairly normal LKO cargo space shuttle, but instead of a deployable cargo, we will fill the cargo bay with fuel tanks to supply the vehicle with what will hopefully be sufficient delta V to make it to the MUN without an external fuel tank required beyond a low curb in orbit. As a matter of fact, I plan to detach that before we reach orbit at all. To make things even harder, I'm not using any nuclear engines for a more efficient spaceflight, nor any jet engines to make return to KSC any easier, so I hope that's enough to get you excited for what's in store. The reason why I wanted to handicap myself by building the fuel supply in this way is because I kind of wanted this space shuttle to come across as just a normal cargo space shuttle that the Kerbals just had in this particular save file, and then they said, hey, let's land on the Mun, let's put some fuel tanks in this space shuttle, that'll probably be enough to get it to go from low carbon orbit, its only intended destination, to the surface of the Mun and back. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. What might not make sense is why I currently have six crew modules stuck to the back of this. I wanted to check my thrust to weight ratio and delta V levels with the vacuum engines only, and not have the numbers skewed by the three vector engines, which are only going to be used for Kerbin Ascent. However, those vectors weigh a lot, so rather than just removing them, I replaced them with those crew modules temporarily, as they weigh roughly the same amount as three vectors. I think the only other thing of note with this shuttle is the fact that I have those tail fins clipped into the cockpit, even though the real shuttle didn't have forward canards. That's because the real shuttle had a lifting body design, so that the fuselage and cockpit themselves provided lift, which the KSP parts uh, aren't really terribly good at. So I hid those fins into the cockpit to sort of simulate a lifting body effect. One other thing I'm adding to the front of the shuttle are some Verna engines to help lift the nose of the shuttle up when it comes to MUN takeoff, because I have Parallax Continued installed, which adds a bunch of colliders on the MUN surface that kind of makes a runway style takeoff impossible. It is a really amazing mod. Lynx is an extremely talented modder. I have always liked the idea of making my own mod, but I really am far from a professional coder. I I've tried learning about coding online before and ended up uh, bored out of my mind, really. Which is why I really want to tell you about Boot.dev, today's sponsor. Boot.dev is not your average online coding course. It's set up like a game, but instead of grinding for loot, you're leveling up your back-end development skills in Python and Go, earning XP, unlocking achievements, and even tackling bi-monthly boss fights with the community. Instead of being subjected to the tedium of video tutorials or lectures, Boot.dev gets you stuck in writing real code building projects, and gaining the hands-on experience you need to kick off a serious tech career. Programmers have amazing earning potential. According to Stack Overflow, the median salary for back-end developers in the US in 2023 was six figures. If you ever get stuck, there's Boots, an AI wizard bear, who can help you through any struggles and help deepen your understanding. Whether you're after a remote career, those sweet six-figure salaries, or just want to learn a great new skill, Boots.dev has you covered. Head to Boots.dev and use my code MATLOWN for 25% off your first month or year. Seriously, give the free demo a try and see how fun coding can actually be. Ah, what a magnifique takeoff. Not. I don't know if I balked the thrust ratios of the SRBs or vectors, or if the shuttle accidentally whacked into a launch clamp that sent it off course, but either way, I thought it was kind of a funny way to start the launch. And you know, keeps me humble and all that. It's true, I can make mistakes. Very rarely, very rarely, but still, you know, they say, they say to me, Matt, you know, you're the best, the very best, and I say, well, thank you, but you know, I'm not always perfect, and I do make mistakes every now and then, it's true, I know. 
Anyway, the rest of the ascent was also complete trash, and so kind of makes it a bit more fun to watch, maybe, than my usual ascents, which are usually, I like to think, pretty good. I've had quite a bit of practice at KSP at this stage, so normally I don't have too many issues with gravity turns. But the jankiness of the aerodynamics of space shuttles and the changing of thrust as the SRBs burn out and the way the weight balance changes as fuel runs out, uh, it makes them a lot more challenging to fly than your typical rocket, or even, dare I say, SSTO. Just then there, with the detachment of the SRBs, the shuttle naturally pulled the external tank around and started flying atop it, rather than below it, which isn't super accurate to the flight profile of the NASA shuttle, though I guess there's no point denying it at this stage. This thing does have some pretty major design points that differentiate it from NASA's vehicles, and I know that I am going to get called out on this in the comments unless I address them really quickly. So, for starters, I have some aerodynamic control surfaces on the top of the external fuel tank. Now, I've got no idea if these were actually needed or not, because, believe it or not, this was actually my very first time test flying the shuttle. I built it, figured it looked okay, and then literally launched it for the very first time. Yep, the entire mission that you're watching is literally take one of this vehicle. But is that not the same as the very first Columbia flight, which was the very first space shuttle flight? That flew astronauts to Earth orbit for real. And of course, there was no revert to vehicle assembly building option, so hey, this mission is just like the NASA shuttle, if we ignore the existence of the Enterprise. So, anyway, another design change is that the shuttle uses the same fuel type for the ascent and for in-space maneuvering, rather than monopropellant for vacuum burns like the real shuttle. I did also say at the beginning of this video that I didn't want to make things too easy and just build the whole shuttle fuselage out of Mark III fuel tanks, but that's not to say that this shuttle doesn't have a pretty ample supply of liquid fuel and oxidizer on board, more so than it may have if it were just used for LKO missions. I know, I know, I sort of violated my own kind of thesis, but this change was unavoidable, sadly, if we want to do a MUN landing. It just needs the extra fuel there if we want to stick with my dream of ditching the external fuel tank before LKO is reached. I guess a future version of this mission could have us keep the external fuel tank all the way to just before MUN surface touchdown, but I guess that's a challenge for another day. Now, I kind of messed up here because I set a, uh, I plotted a maneuver node to get from low curb in orbit to, I guess, you know, a MUN intersect, but then I got a bit too time warp happy and completely missed the start burn time point, so I decided to just let's make this a bit more efficient anyway and just do half the burn and then we'll just do a second burn that gets us all the way to the MUN. So I guess I could have just pretended that I didn't even make a mistake because. I could have said, ah, oh, this is what I'm doing, I'm maximising my use of the O-Birth effect, which therefore makes the mission more efficient, because efficiency is a big thing we have to be thinking about here, because we don't have a huge amount of Delta V to work with, like, we easily have enough, but because we're not doing, like, an Apollo-style mission where we just return to Kerbin and just land in the sea, or anywhere for me, I don't really plan on, I don't really, like, try and land in a specific place most of the time, but because we've got a space shuttle, I feel like there's an expectation that we have to return to the Kerbal Space Center's runway, so it is nice to have a bit of extra Delta V that we might otherwise need for a standard MUN landing, just to kind of steer ourselves, well, not steer ourselves, but deorbit ourselves in such a way that we can get to the runway without any issue. So, yeah, that'd be the, uh, that'd be the challenge of this video. Another thing that I found a bit challenging wasn't really necessarily uh, anything that you guys would relate to, but I, I'm struggling to think of what to do for the thumbnail. And I'm, I was thinking about maybe doing something a bit preposterous and doing kind of a clickbaity thing and having a picture like this as the thumbnail because I wanted to showcase that I'm sending a normal space shuttle to the moon, so I could just have a picture of this shuttle landed, which I won't show for spoilers sake, but it just looks like a standard MUN, like it's like a grey vehicle on the grey surface of the MUN. I think having the external fuel tank just makes it pop a bit more and it shows that hey this is a NASA accurate space shuttle and this is where we're going to take it, but obviously it's a bit misleading because it sort of implies that I'm landing the entire stack on the surface of the MUN, which of course isn't the case, and I'm like is this, is this too egregious, is this too bad of clickbait or is it like, you know, is it, is it acceptable? So, apologies if, if, if you feel this was too much. Um, let me know in the comments below if you it was, and I will bear that in mind and try not to do this again in the future. But I feel like it does a good, it's just, it's an, artist, it's an artistic license, right? It showcases where we're going to go and the vehicle that we're going to use. 
even though it doesn't actually depict a scene that happens in the video, so, so, so to speak. Like, I feel like it's not as bad as those ridiculous top 10 insane aircraft designs that's clearly, you know, been designed by AI. Um, you know, but I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's kind of riding the line a little bit, so I'd love to hear what you think. Anyway, here we are. We've touched down. I'm using those Verna engines there just to soften the landing as we come to a, I, I guess, a steady touchdown. You can see the... Uh, the, uh, the collision of those rocks. Oh, there we are. The uh, rear left uh, landing gear made contact with one of the rocks and it made the whole shuttle come to a nice standstill. And so we can get Jebediah out on EVA and do all of our EVA activities. There he is. Love that little waddle <laughs> he does on, on the low surface gravity of the man. The beautiful looking man, may I add, with of course the aforementioned Parallax Continued mod. Very, very similar to Parallax 2.0, but uh, the idea being that it has much better performance than Parallax 2.0. At the time of recording this video, I believe it's still in paid early access, uh, but it will become free once, you know, it's done. Much the same as Parallax 2.0. There's a lot of naysayers saying, oh, he says that, but it will never be free. Uh, Parallax 2.0 was paid early access, and then it was done, and now it's free. So there you are. And you can just... The Parallax code is right there. You can, like, just compile Parallax Continued yourself. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, controversies, uh, drama aside, here we are getting all of our Kerbals out on EVA for the, uh, for the classic little shot that I like doing. We start from the zoomed out view and gradually zoom in to give a scale of just how small our little spaceship is and how small our little space frogs are compared to the vastness of the Mun. And I know, yes, Kerbal's solar system is actually really, really small compared to the, uh, the real solar system. I mean, the, the classic example is that uh, Earth is the same size as Joule. You know, so that, that's like Joule is like a massive gas giant, tiny, if it were a real planet. So, yeah, anyway, uh, that's... Uh, well, that, uh, that concludes all of our EVA activities. Now I'm going to start thinking about getting back to Muna orbit. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and turn the shuttle around on the Mun surface to be facing 90 degrees on the nav ball, because of course that's the direction that the Mun rotates. So by launching in that direction, we will save a little bit of delta V by using the Mun's rotational force. I kind of overshot the steering a little bit just there, but now we're in prime position, so we can. Uh, enable RCS, yes, we can fire up those front Verna engines, kick ourselves up, and then fire up our two engines. Uh, they're the Cheetah engines, right? Are they the Bobcat? No, the Bobcat one, I believe, is on the two engine bells, right? And then this is the Cheetah. Uh, I feel like it's, uh, it's a, almost every single video now, I fail to remember the name of a Kerbal Space Program part, which is bad, you know, I've been doing these videos. Gosh, it's really scary, actually, guys. Next April is going to be my 10-year anniversary on YouTube. Uh, technically, I started making videos on this channel in, like, 2013, but that was just, like, dumb. I basically used this channel to, like, share Snapchat videos with my friends at university. Oh, by the way, just noticed on the screen, I massively overcooked my takeoff burn and didn't really realize just how high my apoapsis had gotten. But then I looked at the map screen and I was like, you know what, this is fine. We don't need to bother circularizing. Well, I guess we'll be circularizing during this burn. And I'm like, let's just make an escape burn. So if you're wondering why I had such an inefficient uh, ascent just then, that's why I just sort of, I guess dozed off or like stopped paying attention momentarily and then I let my app just get a bit carried away from me. Uh, but what was I talking about? Oh yeah, I had I used to upload Snapchat videos like to this channel to share with my friends. A lot of these videos are now unlisted, but um, uh, I left I left a couple up. Um, uh, yeah, I just sort of uploaded. I don't know if you guys ever knew. If you, if you know my story, my story. Maybe I'll do like a draw by life or something. Is that sort of thing that YouTubers do for my 10 year anniversary? But whatever. Uh, yeah, I just sort of got into making YouTube videos accidentally. I uh, I really wanted the Master Kerbalnaut flare on the KSP subreddit. I didn't know how, and I looked into it. And apparently, you had to upload like a, uh, pictures of you doing a certain mission in line with the weekly Reddit challenge. And I was like, I don't want to go through the mission taking screenshots because I might mess it up and forget to do something. And I like making videos, so I'll just make a little video. And then, now uh, that was 10 years ago, and I'm still doing the same thing. So, what have we learned? I don't know if we learned anything from that. Uh, but uh, anyway, I guess back to the mission at hand. We have just performed our first Kerbin re-entry of several. We're going to make several passes through the upper atmosphere to lower our apoapsis, decelerate ourselves such that it's a bit easier to get back to the Kerbal Space Center. I like getting myself into a roughly low circular orbit, uh, a relatively stable one, and then deorbit at a you know precise controlled point to make it a bit easier 
to get back to the KSC. And we actually have plenty of Delta V remaining. 410 meters per second, half a kilometer-ish almost. After all that hyping up about needing to be efficient, I've, uh, I've actually, I was actually fine. It was all fine in the end, so apologies for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, now I'd say we're in a fairly, you know, low carbon orbit. If we do another pass through the atmosphere, we're going to end up just deorbiting and landing somewhere that isn't the Kerbal Space Center. So now I'm going to do a small burn at Apogee, not to achieve stable orbit, but just to raise my periapsis. So we're passing through a much thinner part of the atmosphere. We're not descending too much. Uh, and therefore not inducing too much drag on the shuttle to lower our apoapsis too much. So I kind of wanted to aim for an apoapsis height of about 80 kilometers, which I think we've managed to achieve there. Actually, we've come slightly under, but not, you know, significantly so. And uh, yeah, and then I looked at the map screen. I was like, actually, you know what? It looks like we're on fairly good trajectory to get to the KSC. So let's not bother circularizing and then re-deorbiting and, you know, doing some things in trod. Let's just do a retrograde burn and head straight to the Kerbal Space Center, which was actually easier said than done. Because I'd forgotten how long ago it was that I actually re-entered uh, with a space plane or, you know, whatever, a winged vehicle uh, on, at night. I can't actually see where the Kerbal Space Center is. I'm so used to using, like, the mountains and the various shorelines to figure out where I need to go and kind of what speed I'm doing. Is it a good speed or a bad speed? But at night... I couldn't really see anything, so I didn't really have much of a visual reference to go by. So I realized a bit too late that I was coming in way too fast and was going to massively overshoot. And I don't really want to have to, like, just land at the island runway and pretend that was my plan all along, which, uh, to be honest, guys, I've, I've done that in the past. Not for a few years, mind, but I have, I have guilty of it. So then I ended up trying to, like, decelerate a bit too hard and fast, and then I induced a stall, basically. So we had to just ride out the stall until the atmosphere was a bit thicker, and then the shuttle could regain aerodynamic stability which i think is coming up yep there we are we have regained control cheeky little quick save just there and uh yeah oh it's all fine we're gonna easily make it to the runway which we can now see because we're low enough and slow enough and of course we can see the uh the illumination from those lights that line well i guess the runway and also the various buildings at the kerbal space center and uh, yeah, I'm trying to just bleed off a bit of speed here by sort of bucking the ship, for want of a better description, in the air as we approach the runway. And we can turn on the landing gear lights and admire the beauty that is modern KSP. Uh, like last week I did old KSP with the horrible shuttle part, so it's it's like a breath of fresh air coming back to uh, coming back to the modern version of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, slow down quite a bit, I probably should have turned down the brake power somewhat, but otherwise, I think that's a pretty good end. To a pretty fun mission that I still can't quite believe I've never done. I can't believe I've never sent a space shuttle to the moon. It seems like such a classic Kerbal mission. So I'm glad I could take that off uh, for this channel and uh, look forward to future endeavours, which will all be made possible, of course, thanks to my wonderful supporters on Patreon and my YouTube channel members. Names on the right there. Thank you so much if your name is there. And of course, massive thank you to boot.dev for sponsoring this video. Uh, they gave me like a free, I, 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 cause I'm like sponsored by them, I get a free membership. So I have been like using it. It is genuinely really, really good. And it's such a clever concept. So yeah, I'm really happy to have a sponsor like boot.dev today. So yeah, oh, I've run out of time. So thanks for watching and goodbye.